Okay, uh, I'm going to start up. Um, we have from yesterday, we have our, um, our mouse, our mouse to scale. Uh, and I'll show you a couple quick modeling things on it. But what I want to start to talk about today is what's the second part of the five, texturing and shading. So you notice this mouse, he has a white body, but he has a uh, blue and a yellow tail, and that tail is um, transparent. So that all falls to another part of what we're doing. What we've been working on so far is just the modeling part. Um, I, uh, we're going to spend probably a couple days on this, and we're also going to get into saving with this too, uh, because once you know how to texture, it will affect how you model. And as an example, if I look at this mouse, he's got like ears and side things on him. I wonder how well we can see that. You could sort of see that there. So anyway, I want to get, I, I could try to model those. Um, and I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it, um, ba, 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 ba. here, I'm going to go with what we have here. And actually, I'm going to, we're, we're using right now is a whole model, right? Um, because, if I hit Shift and Tab, we know it's really just those polygons. Uh, but we're going to work on it as a whole. And so I want to, uh, he has a bulge in the back here. Let's delete that. Uh, and then we'll fill it with one polygon, which I think will be a better way to go. I'm going to hit one edge, hit my L key, and hit P. And now you'll see we have one bulge we can stick in there. And uh, I could even make that larger. I think I will. I'm going to scale it, and that way you can see it starts to bulge a little more the way this guy's bulging. Um, now I'm going to do a little bit with symmetry, because uh, I have things like his ears. Um, let me hit the Q key, I'm going to turn on symmetry, and as long as I'm at, shift and A, uh, zero, 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 it should still work. Again, you have questions, you can always ask. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm going to select here, and you see since we're in symmetry, both sides select, which is good. These are going to become his uh, ear things. So, you know, should I do, you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to go to an edge selection, like that, and I'm going to select these edges. And I'm going to chamfer those edges. Uh, right mouse click near them, chamfer. Good. You see they're giving me a sort of squarish appearance. Uh, maybe more squarish than I want. Let me see what I do with segments here. Oh yeah, no, I prefer it like that with only one segment. So you'll see I now have that going on. Uh, you know what? I'm going to change my mode here, uh, default. Um, what we're looking at over here are different ways of seeing the model, by the way. Default is what it sounds like, the default one, which I should have been on. Um, Wireframe shows you just the wires, the outside of it, which can be useful. There's a whole bunch of these. We'll explore more of them as we go. Right now, I want to stay in default because you can see here that is my original, and this is once I uh, chamfer it. Although I don't want to chamfer the top here, so let me let me Control Z my way out of this mess. Good, and actually I'll deselect that. Hit the two key. Uh, we'll go back here. Here. Yep. Nope. Here, 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 and here. Good. Now, right mouse, chamfer. Good. I don't want it at two, I want it at one. Good. That's what I want. Uh, I can even see that that's starting to make the bulges the way I want them to. Um, I can, with that now, I can take, go to polygon mode, we'll take these three polys, and I will translate them. Good. Uh, and I think I'll also set a hardness level on them. If I hit Shift and W, that's probably too hard, but I want it something like that maybe. If I look at the other side of that, you can see. And actually, let's translate it again too. Although, uh, you know what? My symmetry broke. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> I control Z out of it. Um, let me 
let me take all of these and bulge them out. Um, and let's see if we can translate this outward. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually starting to look sort of the way I want it to look, especially if you look at my mouse here. Um, although I can see the bottom of my mouse I have to pick up. Um, Probably, you know what I can do on that? I'm going to hit the 3 key, and I'm going to select this band of polygons. And if we're in symmetry, it should get it, although I think my symmetry is starting to fail. So I'm going to turn off symmetry. Ah. And let's see, do we want to get those last two? We don't want this one. I'm going to try to shrink the selection. Hit the R key. Um, and I will, yeah, that's actually better. And then I'll translate that downward. Should give my mouse more of a mouse sort of thing going on there. Uh, I might have to work some with the edges, but regardless, as you can imagine, I could sit here and do all sorts of things with this mouse. Um, but let's talk about the second part, as I said, modeling, texturing and shading, animating cinematography and rendering. We're going to look at number two, texturing and shading, and to do that we need to do a little bit of a look at rendering. Um, what we're looking at here, by the way, is your graphics card doing what's called a hardware render. Uh, your graphics card renders this in real time, doesn't use any software resources. You're going to get the best looking results from software. Here's why. All the really interesting things about the way something looks, hair and particles and reflection, things like that, that's written in software. And it's changed so often that the hardware can't keep up. So the software renderer is always going to give us a better looking result. Um, when I want to start figuring out the colors and shading and texturing of this, I'm going to head over to this render window here. And when I click it, I get a layout that's designed to help me shade and texture. Um, this is my main scene down here, and if I hit Shift and A, we should zoom in what we got there. Uh, this, when I hit play, is going to be a software render. It will take longer. Watch. See that? Oh, and notice they're different. Uh, why are you on render camera and you're on camera? Now you should be the same. Yes. Good, so you see that takes a little tiny bit to draw itself in. And that's because the software is rendering this, whereas the hardware is rendering this. Now, the way shading works in Modo is much the way uh, layers work in Photoshop. Um, this is actually a shading stack the way you have a layer stack. Um, I'm gonna make this mouse all one color for right now. I first have to select a bunch of polygons that I want to be one color or one particular texture. Uh, I'm going to go down here, I'm going to hit my three key like any other window, I'm going to select one poly, and you'll notice we don't see that updating in the upper window because that's software, that's not what we're doing down here. I'm going to hit the right bracket key, and when I hit the right bracket key, select all the polygons. Now I hit the M key. The M key makes a new material. Watch. M, it will open this up. We're going to call this uh, mouse body. And from here we can pick a color. And just to show you, uh, our mouse we have here is white. Do we have any mice that are different, different body? Yes, okay, uh, we're going we're gonna to say we're working on this guy here because this guy's pink. Although he doesn't look pink there. Can I get him? Yeah, there. You can see how he's pink when he has less light on him. Let me see how little light. Yeah. Okay. So you see he's pink. So we've got to make him pink. Uh, I'm going to pick this color requester. We're going to head over to pink. I could pick it if I want. That's a good looking pink. And we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to hit OK again. We've got a pink mouse. That's a start. Now, um, Oh, this is okay. Uh, we have to look over here, actually, for our layers. And I'm going to move 
I'm going to move this uh, keyboard down because it will get in her way otherwise. Uh, let's unlock you guys. And we'll grab you and we'll push you down here. Okay, because we're going to have to see the stuff that's over here. Uh, I'll pull this guy down too. Um, we'll push you down. Can I go down that far? I'll go down that far to there. Okay. Um, we're going to push that down because we're going to need this stuff over here. Um, this is the object we're on, which is the mesh. This is the new material we just made. Um, this material is called mouse body up here. And you see here is what's called the material node. The material node is the layer that describes everything about the way we want that mouse to look. Uh, I'm going to go through it quickly. Um, the diffuse color is the main color of the mouse. It's like if you were buying paint, what the paint color would be. And this is where this gets more complicated. The way shading works in 3D, um, modeling we know we've got these straight lines, points and edges and what have you. Shading is a matter of description. So basically, I have to look at something. Let's say I'm looking at this cup holder. It's black. It's shiny. It has stripes on it. Um, you know, it might be slightly translucent. When I'm shading in 3D, what I have to do is I have to describe everything about the object and then, well, someone else writes the code, but then I have to modify that code to make the object meet that. Um, the first thing as we set up here, that is the texture. Uh, the main color, like paint. Um, the second thing here, this is the shiny part. See that, that white highlight right there? That's the shiny part. So watch if I turn this up. That's that shiny part getting shinier, um, but not more focused. Uh, the focus of the shiny part is here. This is roughness. Watch when I turn roughness down, it will appear to be a much shinier thing. See that? You can even see the reflections will have you coming off of it. Um, Fresnel is the direction of the um, shiny part. Can you even see that affecting us here? I'm going to turn my roughness up a little bit. And if we modify Fresnel, you notice I modify these and I look to see what happens. I'm not seeing a good difference with that. Um, Anastropy should be the direction of the highlight. Except maybe the shader doesn't have those directions. I'm going to put that back to zero. Uh, clear coat is if this had paint on it, like car paint. Uh, this is designed to make things look like car paint. If I turn this up, it will give it what looks like a shiny layer over the top of it. And that could also have roughness in it. As you see, I could break that up too. Um, I don't need any of those. Uh, we'll get to these ones too, um, eventually. Uh, now, here's the thing with my, with my mouse here, if I can see the color of them right. Let me see here. We have them there, and if I block, there you go. So you can see he's pink, and you see his tail is uh, red and yellow, uh, but is also kind of transparent. So the way I have to do that is I have to, I'm going to hit my three key over here. I have to create a different shader, and I'll do it down here. Uh, I'm going to hit three. We'll go make sure we're in the mesh. Hit my three key. Oh, I renamed it. I hate it when I do that. There we go. Okay. Um, well, you know what? We'll make just the tip of it will be one shader. Uh, 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 like that. Okay. Now I'm going to hit the M key again. And we're going to call this tail tip. Uh, and that's going to be yellowish. So let's make it yellowish. And we're going to hit OK. We've got a yellowish tail. What we don't have is a yellowish transparent tail. That's a separate tab over here. Um, I now have this shader mouse body, and here's a shader called tail tip. If I go into its material node, uh, we'll make it shinier. We'll turn its roughness down here. We'll increase its specular amount. Maybe not that high. No, that's a little too high. OK, that's OK. Now I'm going to go to transparency. This is how transparent that tail is. Uh, right now it's at zero. If it was 100% transparent, it would basically disappear. The only thing we're seeing here is the shininess of it. Now, here's the thing when they were um, describing um, 
how things look. That became very important very quickly. Uh, and here's a perfect example of it. This uh, is a bottle of a beverage. And the beverage bottle is made out of plastic, and the beverage is made out of whatever they make beverages out of. But they bend light differently. Uh, it's called an index of refraction. Uh, the example I always think of is if, if you ever see a clear pool, and there's a quarter, and you reach for the quarter, your arm goes in a different direction when it enters the pool. And that's because the water actually bends light differently. Um, you know how it bends light. It bends light, if I click this, water, water, water. It bends light like this, just like that. Uh, a 133 uh, index of refraction is the way water bends light. Uh, if the end of that tail were made out of diamond, which bends a whole lot of light, it would look like that. Now note, we don't see any of that here because this software is not powerful enough to show it. I'm sorry, the hardware. The software can show it. Um, I don't want it to be 100% transparent. Let's try 80% transparent because then we still see some of the yellow, which is good. And if I look at my tail here, um, if we can get it real close up there, yes. Uh, it's not focused. Uh, I can't see through it clear. It's got a roughness. Let's put in a 20% roughness. Ooh, I like that. Now the shininess is too much, so I'm going to go back to shininess over here, and we will make that a little bit rougher too. Good, that's actually what I wanted to see. I wanted to see that bright spot break up the way this one did. Maybe not that far. And you see I play with these and I check. Uh, refractive index, good, specular about Okay, um, you know one of the other things we mentioned, uh, all those subdivision techniques, remember, they're all um, basically straight lines where we just put them in the shape of a curve. So if I go back down here and I hit shift and tab, this is still just that weird square shape. You can see the shaders on it though. Um, I'm seeing straight lines here that I don't like. So I actually want to take the model and I want to go to its surface tab, which is there surface. Good. And then I want to take the subdivision level here and I'm going to increase it so that those straight lines go away. Oh yes, yeah, that's that I'm that I'm liking. Although this shiny spot now is a little too shiny for my taste. So let's go back to tail tip over here. Um, if I go to this tab, my material reference, good. You notice all these tabs on the right? Those are all the various controls I have access to. I'm not going to kid you guys, this screen is getting a little complicated. Um, remember, at any moment I can go back here and I'm back home safe in comfortable modeling land. And I can go back to modeling, which is good. You'll see that my display does not look quite as good. It looks okay, it looks sort of shiny like it, but this hardware display is not going to match, when I go to the renderer, the render display. Because the render display is using that very powerful software to uh, draw this, but as you see, it also takes a lot longer to draw it. Then we have our list of items. Then we have our shader tree, our shader layer tree here, which is layers of shaders that go down just like in Photoshop. And then we have the actual properties that are attached to these. So there's a lot happening on this screen. Um, you notice we haven't done the animation part yet, but so you know it has to do with some stuff down there, but we won't look at that right now. Um, I'm going to, I'm worried about that shiny spot, that that spot's a little too shiny. I'm going to increase the roughness. And the way I learned this is by practice, truthfully. Um, make it a little bit shinier too, maybe like that. I also don't like this background, this kind of gray, horrible background. Um, Everything we see in here is part of the layer tree in here. And the background is what's known as the environment. If I go into the environment, and I go into the environment node, and then its own material, I can change the way the background looks. Um, this should be on by default. I'm going to pick physically based daylight. And now my background looks like it's outside during the day. And if we look back over here, I wonder if we can get the same. 
Oh, you know what? Look at that. I can tell I want it to be yellower. See that? Uh, so let's go back up here to my material. Let's pump up that yellow. Uh, yellow, 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 yellow. I happen to know that yellow is um, red and green, so let's just drop out the blue. That should make it yellower. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Ah, I'm going to close that. Um, we're probably shining too much light, but I can do something else. The light that shines could also be yellow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's starting to get. That's, that's, let, let's head back over to our, there. See, we're starting to get that. We're even starting to get that happy glow around the edge here. There are people who do nothing but this, by the way. I have a friend, a former student, and uh, his job, and he was paid a lot of money for this, was uh, hair. Like, that's all he did. He worked just on the hair and the texture of the hair and the way the hair worked on different models. Uh, and there'd be someone who'd work just on transparencies and someone who'd work just on eyeballs. Um, you can spend, like, like I actually, here's a funny thing. A lot of people don't know this about me, but of the five areas, the one that I always like the best is rendering. The last one, um, which we're starting to see some of here. Uh, and... The work I used to do depended very heavily on this because what I did had to be photorealistic. Everything I did, like, I promise you this, you've seen movies I've worked on and was not credited in. And the reason is that 80% of what I did was repairs. Uh, something was shot wrong and I had to go in and fix it. And you had to fix it so well that nobody ever knew it happened. So I spent a lot of time matching things to make sure that they looked right. And I spent a lot of time rendering and playing with shaders. Um, you may not want to do that, obviously. Because you don't want to do that, we're going to show you another thing that they give you here um, to make your life a little bit simpler. Um, this is a lot of stuff in here. If I go to the Render Preset Browser and I go into Cloud Assets, Mono gives you a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff. Uh, if I go into Materials, these are all pre-made materials. Um, I'm going to pick plastic, and let's see if we can find a clear plastic. And this is where working in scale is really important. Ooh, I can't pull that bigger. I forget. I'm right there. Uh, I can shrink this down a little bit so you can see it. Okay. Good. So now you can see these are pre-made pre -made textures I can drop on something. Um, this is a uh, Lego texture, and... If I want to try it, all I have to do is go like this and say, oh, there's the tail texture. Let's drop that. And it didn't do anything. That's a shame. Uh, oh, you know why? I'm in the wrong one, I bet. Tail tip. You should be over there. Oh, well, let's try that again. There we go. Um, that doesn't work at all for me. <laughs> uh, and so if I don't like it, I have little eyeballs here like I have in a layer. I can go back to the original. So matter of fact, I can decide I want to delete that texture. It's gone. Uh, let's go back and find more of our plastics and cloud assets. Uh, materials. Uh, let's go back into our plastics here. And, um, ooh, high gloss. Ooh, clear plastic. Actually, I want it to be a clear plastic. Now, it should take a second, and it will pop these in place. Um, Let's try, I'm going to make these a little bigger. I would try plastic frosted, but balloon has a certain, let's try balloon. I'm going to click it and drag it, and when I get it to where I already have a material, it should let me drop it there. Uh, it downloaded the assets. Okay, so now you'll see under tail tip, I have another material that's on top that is balloon. And if I look at that material... I know that it's supposed to be yellow, so let's find where its color is. Uh, default gray. Um, so I have to dance around here. Aha, there's its color. If I make this yellow, yes. Oh, actually, that's, 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 not, that's not far. I mean, um, it has to be brighter, but um, I'm sort of liking this, to tell you the truth. Uh, let's make it brighter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's reading to me. That's 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 starting to get there. 
Um, now here's an ironic thing about that. Uh, I like that. Um, the rest of this tail, and I'm going to go back to 3D view, you notice in this bottom window here, we have these various tabs that open up different things I need to be able to shade properly. Uh, I got to make these polys back here have to be reddish. Let's make sure we get all of them. Is that all I want? Actually, you know, I want two on the back. I've got those two too. Okay. I'm going to make that a new material. I'm going to hit the M key. Uh, we're going to call this tail mid. Middle of the tail, right? Uh, we know it's going to be red, but we're just going to make it green right now just so we can see it. Okay. Now, um, I want that to be that, that, that reddish balloon. So, uh, if I go here, we have it already there. I could just drag this and drop it, and you should be red balloon. Look at that. What do you think of that? That's not too bad looking, right? Let, let's do this. We back out a little bit. Remember, the point of this assignment is to make this guy photo real. So, you see, he gets too much. There you go. You can get a better, better view of him there. Uh, I feel like I'm in some weird 3D thing trying to show you the... Okay, so um, at this point, this is what I mean by when you shade a little bit, I can tell how I can model now. Uh, I know where I need more detail because I can look at my... I can look at this and decide, aha, I need more detail along here. Let's go back here and we'll select a couple lines. Uh, my two key here and here and here and here and here. And let's set a hardness level on those. Yeah, that's better. And we'll push that out. Ooh, I should have done it. I should have done it symmetrically, but I didn't. But I'll pull that. You know what? I'll push that in a little bit maybe. Eh, we'll leave it like that. Um, I'm going to show you one other thing here. And by the way, I've showed you a lot, I think. That's my feeling here. I'm going to show you how to save. Um, should you be saving yet? I don't know. Um, you do better when you start over always. But when you start to get into more complicated models, you might want to save. Um, we're still working on our pieces of uh, food that we have in front of us to model with. So if I go to File, Save As... Uh, I'm going to save it as something called an LXO, um, which stands for, I forget what it stands for, it doesn't matter, but note how many I have here. See that? I keep saving different versions of them, and the files are very small, 26 kilobytes. 5,000 kilobytes, that's 5 megabytes, that's nothing. So you never overwrite when you save. I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call this Gummy Mouse 1. And I'm going to hit save. And if I go into documents now, just to show it to you. Documents, 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 documents. There they are. Uh, if we go by date modified, Gummy Mouse 1 is 321K. It's not even a full megabyte. So whenever I do a major change, I should save again. Like, let's say, decide, um, well, is there a major change I should do? Yeah, you know what? I want to push these three edges together. Uh, one, two, three, like that. And we'll go like this. And I'll scale those inward like that. Uh, because my mouse sort of does that. If you look at his rear there. Can you see that? Well, you can sort of see that there, yes. Um, okay. Uh, I can decide then, you know, as a backup, ah, I'm going to do a geometry cleanup. Always do mesh cleanups, remember. Never hurts. Oftentimes helps. See that? Uh, and I'll do another save. Save as. Do not save over the top. Save over the top. You might lose it. Gummy Mouse 2. Save. These programs crash a lot. Um, I'm going to show you how much this program crashes. System preferences. Here are the preferences, I should say some of the preferences for the program. Uh, there are thousands of them. 
like I said, you can modify anything in this program. If I go under Auto Save, this program crashes so often, it automatically saves everything it does by an amount you say. Like I have it set to 15 minutes. You could change that. You could put it to 10 minutes. And I save nine revisions of everything. And this is where I save them. So if you ever crash, you can go back to your machine. You can find where stuff is. Um, it's also worth, while you're here, uh, you should give yourself more levels of undo. Um, let me find out where that is. Uh, is it there? I probably could search for it, but uh, there it is. Um, I think you default to 100 levels of undo, and I set mine to 2,000 levels of undo. Um, just to show you that, if I do um, control Z, is it control Z? Let me just make sure it's control Z, undo, control Z, yeah. We could probably go back to what I, you know, before we started this lesson. And it keeps going back doing different things each time. Um, again, when it defaults to 100, you can lose that pretty quickly. Look, it's going back, changing the colors and everything. Uh, but I'd prefer, as far as I prefer to redo all that. <laughs> Control Shift C. Let's see how far that'll let us go. Control Shift C. It's good you see those keyboards being pressed. Although I don't see it changing the way I want it to. So maybe I'm kidding myself. The only reason I want to do that is so that you can see at the end the rendered work you did. Okay? Okay, guys. This is a lot of information for you now. Uh, you know what you're working on, right? Um, you know uh, how to select points, edges, and polygons. Uh, you know how to scale, rotate, and translate them. You know how to subdivide them with bridges, and bevels and extrusions and chamfers. Uh, you know how to hit shift and tab to subdivide everything and you know how to select parts and pieces and um, set uh, crease levels on those with the shift W key once you select those pieces when you're in the subdivided mode and now you know a whole bunch of shading too. Boy, man, you're getting quite a deal. Uh, what have we been in this class? Five sessions? Anyway, um, I'm going to put this video up. Uh, you keep working.